very ill, and we pray that you bless him. Yeah. Uh, strengthen him and lift him up, Father, and yeah. allow him to be uh, back to his normal health, to be your yeah. will. Yeah. And we also pray for uh, Michelle Baldwin, who's having some serious pain. And we just pray that you would bless her and would give her relief from her pain and pray that all will be well with her. And we pray also for the brothers at Rainbow, those who yeah. are sick there. Yeah. Yeah. Of struggling, we know that you're able. No matter how difficult things may be, we yeah. know that you're more than able to make a change in that situation for the better. Yeah. And we pray also, Father, for Brother uh, Stanley Terrell, and we pray that you bless him. Yeah. We know that you know his situation. We know that you're able to help him. Yeah. Therefore, Father, we just call on you to make things better for him. And you also, your your son. Uh, grandson and sister Kyle, we pray that you would bless him, Father, yeah. and, and allow him to, to get have a speedy recovery. We just pray that all will be well with him and, and bless his parents that they take part in his care. Yeah. Yeah. We pray that all will be well with them. Mm -hmm. We pray also for the that Williams family who uh, lost a loved one. We just pray that you would uh, bless and comfort the Williams family at this time. Yeah. We pray that all will be well with them. Yeah. We pray also for Cindy Hill, who's recovering from surgery. And we pray, Father, that you would be with her and, and uh, allow things to go well with her. And we pray that uh, she would have a speedy recovery. Yeah. And also, uh, T.J. Davis, the, the grandson of Sister uh, Davis, we pray that you would bless him. Yeah. We know that you know his situation, whatever it may be. We know that you able to help him. We know that you have solutions for whatever problem he's facing at this time. Yeah. Yeah. We just pray, Father, that you be merciful toward him. And we pray the same for Brother Lewis. Pray that you would uh, bless him with the blessing yeah. that he's standing in need of. Yeah. We yeah. know that you know his situation. And we pray for Miss, Miss Irene Ash, who's ill at this time. We pray that you would be with her during this period of illness, comfort her, and and then just lift her up from a bed of affliction. Father. Yeah. And we pray also for Sister Pat Simon, who will be traveling. We pray that you will be yeah. with her and those who may be with her. We pray that you will protect them and, and guide them and allow them to have a safe and enjoyable trip. Yeah. And we yeah. pray also for Brother Noah, who indicated he wasn't feeling his best. And we just pray that yeah. you bless him as well. Yeah. Help him to overcome whatever his difficulties may be at this time. And Father, we just pray for our entire nation. We, we pray, Father, that you would bless those who are leadership roles in, in this country. We pray that you would help them to make good sound decisions in order to have the best interests of all people at heart. Yeah. And we also pray, Father, for those who are suffering over in the Middle East, over in Israel and, yeah. and uh, Palestine, we just pray, Father, that you would bless those individuals over there, give them peace. We yeah. pray that they will desire peace and come to uh, some kind of decision that will eliminate the, the killing over there, yeah. Father, and pray that all will be well with them. We pray, Father, that you would just be with those people who lost the families and some who that were lost seemingly entire families. We pray that yeah. you would be with them and comfort them during this time of, of extreme difficulty for them. Yeah. And we just pray, Father, for our neighbors and our, our communities and all yeah. those that we come in contact with. We pray, Father, you would help us to be on our best behavior at all times and all that yeah. we may be able to, to assist someone else in learning your will and way. And we just pray, Father, that you help us to not ever do things that will cause shame to come to the church. Yeah. And we just pray, Father, that you would uh, uh, be with those who are teaching the gospel. And we pray for those who hear your word uh, week after week and sometimes day after day, but yet have not uh, obeyed it. And we yeah. just pray that you would help them to see the need to obey before it's determined too late. And we, yeah. We pray for all men everywhere who are teaching the truth, and we pray that you would help them to continue to teach the truth and, and not wait. Yeah. And we just pray for peace in every home. We pray pray for love uh, in the church, outside of the church, and wherever we may be. Yeah. 
that was not be peace peace breakers, but peace makers. Amen. Forgive us of our sins and when life here should be no more. We pray that our home in heaven will await us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Alright, how is everyone tonight? Alright. Alright, All right. welcome, welcome. We'll go ahead and go to our respective ways and then come back in here at the end. So always my pleasure to be with you and spend time with you, and I look forward to being with you. Uh, most of all, we look forward to being with the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, right? Amen. Again, we got enough to have Jesus in the midst of us, right? Amen. Take us two or three gathered in his name, and where is he? Amen. In the midst of us. And that's how powerful Jesus has to be, because if we've got two or three here in uh, this congregation, two or three in Rainbow down the street, guess what? He there too. <laughs> so he can be at two million places at one time. So that's the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, we're always in the presence of royalty in two ways. Of course, he's king of kings, lords of lords, but God also said we're a holy nation as well, right? A royal priesthood. So we're also among royalty among ourselves, being a part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, also known as what? Romans 16, verse 16. The Church of Christ. So thank you, thank you again for being out here tonight, and uh, we're going to continue our study in the Book of Numbers. Has been an enriching study for you so far as we go through this book. Oh yes, you learned so much again when you look at Exodus and Numbers, uh, specifically those two books that come to mind. We're seeing the parallels with the church, right? Obviously, that uh, they were the people of God at that time. Uh, they went through trials and tribulations. They had a leader in Moses. We got the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But on a greater level, we have Jesus and the church, right? And our wilderness is being what? This Christian life yeah. that we're walking through. So whatever they're going to experience, we will also experience some of these things ourselves. Some in the literal sense, some in the symbolic sense. But one thing we're going to know is that we're going to also, in our wilderness, suffer trials and tribulations just like them, right? Mm -hmm. And anytime you're in the wilderness, Satan is there too. Because obviously, even though he is not called by name, Satan had to be in the wilderness with them because of their behavior, mm -hmm. right? Because he is the one that always causes chaos, confusion, division, all that kind of thing. So he, even though he's not named, he's out there messing with people's heart and causing them to do things that are contrary to the will of God. So you'll have that as well, uh, as well, even in our day and age. So again, you know how we do this. We definitely want your questions, your comments, and your suggestions as we go along. And of course, we're going to start in chapter 20. Chapter 20 is one of my favorites as well, personally. And uh, Let's go ahead and get somebody to read Numbers chapter 20, the first five verses to set the tone tonight. Anybody? Then it came the children of Israel, even a whole congregation, into the desert of Ben in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Marion died there, and was buried there. And there was no war for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron. And the people called with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this to this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vine or of or of pomegranate. Neither mm -hmm. is there any water to drink. All right, thank you. Then that's Numbers twenty, verse one to verse number five. I did forget to introduce what we're talking about tonight. Uh, we're on Numbers part twenty-three in our series. They just made it three words. Well, four technically, complaining, complaining, and complaining, all right? And I remember in a, cl a class or so ago that our brother said, the complaining's coming. <laughs> well, it's not just coming one time, it's coming quite a bit. <laughs> and this is just one more example of that. Anybody want to venture and to say, what did you just pick up from there? What's really going on right now? What's going on out of those first five verses? What did you, what did you notice? Well, they were disagreeing. Disagreeing about what? 
about where they are right now. They didn't have certain things. Okay. So where are they now? Literally? In a wilderness. And really, what is the wilderness? What's the, what do we call the wilderness for that? The desert, correct. Because you want to paint that picture of what they're really going through and why it's such a challenge to the faith. Right? They're not in the pasture land. They're not around places where there's wells and that kind of stuff. They're in a real hostile environment to what? Our health our, and our, our, our ability to just live. Yeah. And so they're in some very, very harsh situations. Anyway, else, keep going now. What, what do you see? So they're in a desert situation, a hostile environment. What's, what else is going on? Y'all can say it in unity if you want. <laughs> no doubt in mind, you know, a desert is a hot place. Yes. It's, it's not a pleasant place to be in. If you've never had an opportunity, well, being in the military, I had an opportunity to stay in the desert for mm -hmm. training for 30 days. And I tell y'all, first, First two or three days were about the worst days. Whew. Not only during the day, it's the hottest place during the day, and it's the coldest place. I heard about that. At night. At night, yeah. It's no warm, no warm. No warm. Mm -hmm. And the wind comes at a certain time, on time, every day, at the exact time. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure. And I, I can understand how they, 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 they crying out to, to Moses here. Mm -hmm. And a certain thing about the, it just doesn't say anything about the wind here, but in the desert, the wind blows at a certain time, and your back has to be against the wind. If not, the sand completely covers everything. Yeah. So I can understand, no doubt, how God had to take care of them. I can see it in my head that mm -hmm. there's a lot here that Moses had his hand for. Oh, yeah. And no doubt, now they, like you said, they complain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remember, this would yeah. not be a small group. I want you to see a big, large Major. group. Because we don't know how many is out there. I'm not going to say that. But one thing we know, when they came out of Egypt, it was 600,000 men. Mm -hmm. The encounter women. And, and the children. And the so when somebody wanted to stone Moses, who knows how big a mob that would have been. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is... The amount of people out there was get the size of Gaston several times over, and you don't know how much murmuring was going on, right? There's in a hand back there. Go ahead, yeah, Brother Mitchell. I think they're going, they're going back to doing the same thing they've done yeah. previously. <laughs> you know, they they their murmuring is, is really short. It's not yes, and so, uh, complaining against Moses yeah. and Aaron, yeah. and, and so they did have a problem. But you know, they forget that God has solved the problem before the same thing that they're complaining about right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and although they had seen how God works, they, they, but they have, you know, the things they don't have their way, it seems like. Right. They just forget about God, you know, and mm -hmm. rather than calling on God themselves, too. Mm -hmm. I guess it's mm -hmm. because uh, they, they, People seem like you just couldn't satisfy. Yeah. And oftentimes that's the way it is today. No matter what you oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, people still don't complain. Right. And, mm -hmm. and uh, see, they, they know what has happened before when they had the same problem. They, they got water, but still, oh. you know, and, and the same question again. Mm -hmm. why, why didn't you just love dying in Egypt? Yeah. Well, you know, they know what was going on in Egypt. They were oppressed. But I tell you what, this is another reason why it's so dangerous with false preachers to preach a prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, just because you're in God, you're in Christ, you're, you're following God, does not exempt you from suffering. Mm -hmm. it, you have to go through the same life cycle everybody else in the world goes through. You go through your ups and you go through your downs. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, there are Christians in every situation that the world is in. Think about it. If there's a hospital, there's a Christian there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't it? If there's somebody that's kind of not doing as well as they want to financially, some of us are there. It happens, right? God does not exempt us from the things that happen to the rest of humanity. And when people will try to act like that's the case, they are lying through their teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is not the truth. I mean, think about it. I, mean, I think my wife uh, says things similar to this. If Jesus had to suffer while he's here on earth and we're his disciples, what do you think we got to do? 
We have to go through some things. We're not better than our master. We're not better than Jesus. And so whatever he went through, the highs and the lows of his life, we're going to go through some of those same highs and he's going to go through some same lows, right? Because if you think about it, when he told them he's going to give them a land of Canaan, he didn't say, I'm going to give you the easy route to get there. No man expects that. But God didn't say that, right? So it's the same thing today. There is no easy road. It's just a road being who? Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6, right? That's what Jesus said, right? Go ahead. I feel, well, in my understanding that I feel like they is in that wilderness like they keep complaining and, and God leaving them right there and not letting them go to the promised land yet because, like it said, 20 years um, older, that's the only people that's going to get to go right. over there. So they there because they keep complaining and mumbling and get stuck. Their faith mm -hmm. is what put them there, yeah. right? So their lack of faith is what put them in this position mm -hmm. that they're in. Like you said, we don't know how long it really would have took from Egypt to uh, uh, the land of Canaan. But mm -hmm. again, Bible scholar says 11-day journey by foot. Mm -hmm. 11 days as opposed to 40? Mm -hmm. You mean your, your, your mm -hmm. faith cannot last 11 <laughs> days? That's less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. huh? And you just can't hold on that long? Mm -hmm. Why do you think God would be angry? That's a, as we like to say, that's a drop of, in the bucket of time that God was going to take care of you, right? When you look at number four there, mm -hmm. it says, why you have brought us up, mm -hmm. the congregation of the Lord, into this world. Mm -hmm. That they did not finish it. That we ain't going to finish it, guys. And think, who is he talking to, though? Who are they talking to? Most of them. Actually, God listening to him, you know, yeah, and that, I mean, he listened exactly. No doubt he knew that's what they were going to say. In the first place. Yeah, absolutely. And think about it again, it's really not Moses and Aaron leading him. Right? Who's really leading him? God. God. And again, we knew that again from the previous studies in the, the, the uh, pillar of the cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, the angel of the Lord was in those things. Right? That's God. That's God. Okay? So I can see, really, he's the one. You know, I'm studying several books of the Bible. I'm studying uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm also studying Samuel and, you know, others. Uh, and you know that and I'm in, the, in the chapter where they're rejecting God as king. Right. Mm -hmm. They've always done that. God told Samuel that they have always done this. They're not rejecting you, Samuel. They're really rejecting hey, me. God didn't say that, but it's the same thing that's happening here. Right. They're not really rejecting Moses and Aaron. They're actually rejecting God at the end of the day, right? Their faith won't let them see past the hostility of the desert. Won't let them see past the inhabitants of the land that they had to fight, right? So all of this is what? A measure, really, what's the root of it all? What's the real, real promise? What comes before disobedience? A lack of faith. Right? A lack of faith. That's the real root cause of all this complaining and all that kind of stuff. Lack of faith. Well, I, just, uh -huh. well, I was just thinking while you were talking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're talking about all the uh, people that were out in the wilderness. And, you know, God said the only one that come in on the that will come into the land of Canaan. Right. But, you know, that sort of reminds me of today's time. Mm -hmm. As if uh, there are so many that don't believe God. And it's just a, sort of an illustration as to what's going to happen when God comes back. It's just going to be that few. Yes. And yeah. then that big group of people that don't believe in God or don't want to do what he said do, they believe that they want things to go their way. Yeah. Just like these people. Right. And uh, and they get mad and upset because, you know, why God did this to me and why God did this to me. Well, you know, the devil is just as powerful. Mm -hmm. But they don't seem to understand that. Mm -hmm. But what I was getting at, it just amazes me that there was no one adult other than those three in that crowd that, that, that believed God. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb. By uh, yes, all of them getting mm -hmm. punished. Mm -hmm. and all, but you know, people go along with the crowd. Yeah. So that sometimes is what happens when, you know, whoever believes the crowd, is, the, the, he talked the loudest, that's what they're going to go to. Yeah. They that's true. They don't, they don't think that. That's true. That was just 
something that was on my mind, and I thought mm -hmm. what a parallel it was to what's going on. So you see human behavior, yeah. mm -hmm. and you also see church behavior yeah. mm -hmm. here too. Think about the times that we're living in. Uh, we are living in the great falling away. Why do you think when we can have events at the church, you no longer have to put chairs in the highway? When it used to be just, what, 15, 20 years ago, full. This place is different than when I got here 12 years ago. When I first got here 12 years ago, think about it, for, for several weeks we had 100 people here. We don't have half that now. And it's not because we have any scandals. I can see if we got caught up in scandals and people running away, that kind of stuff. No. It's just that what? People are turning off the light in themselves. And living in what? Darkness themselves, which is sin. Right? Living by selfish motives is really what it really boils down to. Instead of being what? Denying themselves, picking up their cross and following Jesus. Right? Absolutely. Let me move real quickly here. Yeah, just because I'm losing a little bit of time. But it's okay, though. This, what you're saying is absolutely necessary. I wanted you to set the tone and make sure you saw what was going on. So we just set the scene. That's called what? Context. Mm -hmm. Context. What was really going on? What was their situation? Why are they reacting this way? We established that. And we really established, because we know more of the Bible than just what's listed here, the real root cause of Satan underneath this. Mm -hmm. That's the real root cause. Right, Satan fighting the power of God in the hearts of man is really what he's doing. All right, so let's sum it up real quickly here. So now the people oppose Moses due to what? A water shortage at the desert of Zin, right? Mm -hmm. Today, we should not forget that God promised Christians peace, joy, happiness, and eternal life in heaven, mm -hmm. not on earth. Because right. Revelation 21 verse 4, remember we talked about that last week in, uh, in the sermon. Revelation 21 is about heaven, what heaven's going to be like. And so that's why you see verse 4, there'll be no more crying, dying, pain, no sorrow, and God's going to wipe away all tears from the saints' eyes. That's talking about heaven, not here. How do you know that? Common sense. Because even here, I don't care how happy you may be, how good things are going, let your loved one die. You won't cry. Because why? We're still here on earth. Those things still exist, okay? So you, and I don't care how good you take care of yourself, how much medicine you take, uh, what, what your health insurance is like, how good a surgeon or a doctor you have, you're going to die one day. Oh, yeah. As long as God allow us to stand, it, you know, we're going to die one day. It's coming. Mm -hmm. So we obviously know that what? Something's got, is going to happen to us on earth that's not going to be so pleasant, Right? And so we know this, that again, you can't, because uh, there was a gentleman that uh, did a funeral here in town that long ago, and his whole, I looked up his website, he was out of Mobile, Alabama, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember the name of the, the, the false church that he has over there, but the whole premise on the website was what? God is going to give you prosperity, and he's going to give you great health. Mm -hmm. Is he? Mm -hmm. Then why do you die? Mm -hmm. And I and really, I couldn't challenge you. Okay, you preaching the funeral, what happened? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me leave it alone. Let me leave it alone. <laughs> but it's common <laughs> sense. Common sense. Okay? All right. But I, let me, let me uh, preface that. I call it biblical common sense. Mm -hmm. Common sense based on what God has taught us. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay. That's for sure. All right. So here we go. Let's go back. Let me, let me get back on track here. Again, even though God issued a promise to these folks in Numbers, right? There are challenges before it's realized, and that does not mean God will not honor his promise. Right. The same thing today, right? Because again, what are we aiming for? We don't care about Canaan land. Hmm, they actually are fighting in Canaan land right now. Right. Palestine is part of Canaan land. You know, in Israel, it was all one land at one time called Canaan before it was conquered by the Jews. All of that was hated, right? So that that obviously cannot be the promised land we're going to, right? I don't want to go to a war zone, right? So that can't be what? Heaven. It can't be heaven, okay? By any form of fashion. So we're looking for a land greater than all that, right? They got an earthly promise, but we have a heavenly promise. That's why the New Testament, the New Covenant is far superior than this, right? Far superior. All right. So again, Titus chapter 1, verse number 2. I wish this was in the children of Israel. 
Titus chapter 1 verse 2 is what? God cannot lie. Right? And of course we know from his track record he also cannot what? Fail. He never has failed, right? All right, now, so if, when we know this and our faith is based on the fact that we know that God is true, God is loyal, the Bible calls it what? Faithful. Mm -hmm. That's why we can say he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you, right? right? When that is the case, we trust him in all circumstances. We trust him when things are going right. We trust him when we're in the wilderness. We trust him when we have water. We trust him when we don't have water. We trust him when we have food. We trust him when we don't have food, right? Amen. Because at the end of the day, he still said to our covenant, in Matthew 6, verse 33, said what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. But I don't see it. My refrigerator is empty. I don't have anything on my plate. You're going to get something. You're going to get something. He's not going to let you starve because that is a promise unto us, right? It was a promise to them. Why? Because he said what? I'm going to get you to the land of Canaan, the promised land. So in order to do that, he had to already what? Ordain it that he was going to feed them and give them water until they got there. Otherwise, how else could he have fulfilled his promise? So again, what is that again? I call that what? Biblical common sense. If he's going to make a promise to me, he's going to make me get there. Joshua and Khalid, right? They don't want to believe that kind of stuff. Not the rest of the pack, right? Alright. So again, we trust him in all circumstances while the promise is still unfulfilled. And today, this is what the church needs to learn. Not necessarily here in the street, but the church in general. You don't malign your leadership for hardships that you're going through. People always got to have somebody to be the scapegoat for whatever they're going through, right? You think about that. The, the church itself is going to also go through issues too. Sometimes the church as a whole, the money in the church is going to be good. Sometimes it's going to be what? No. Terrible. Right? The church in the neighborhood might be nice a decade ago, but it can also turn mm -hmm. on you and become dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. And so obviously then what? The same stuff can hit us as trials and tribulations. So why would you blame the preacher for it? Mm -hmm. Why would you blame the elders? Why would you blame the deacons, etc.? You get where I'm coming from. That's what they're doing. And people will do that all the time. Okay, that even happens today when these men are not even associated to what's going on. They're going some of, through some of the same things that you are. But they what? They end up being what? The doormat for everybody else to be home. <laughs> and people do that. People do that. So we got to realize, don't do that. Because why? Ultimately, it's who's in charge? Not Moses and Aaron. God. Not the elders or the deacons God. or the minister. It's really what? God. God. At the end of the day. Okay? All right, so again, bad things are going to happen even to the flock today, meaning some hardships on us that uh, no matter who's in charge of the local congregation, stuff is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. it, until what? God calls the change to come, to come, okay? I, I had a gentleman back in Detroit one time, and you know, me and Cross were back there, um, you know, back those days. I was assisting him in the ministry there. And one of the brothers come out and start saying, if we had a powerful preacher, we'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Man, we should get into it. But anyway, let me get that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was always in target for some reason, warning anybody out there. But anyway, it happens. Yeah, it yeah. happens. It but there was something that Brother Thompson put in me a long time ago, right when I was young and, and striving to be a preacher. He said one thing to me that kept me 24 years in the ministry now. He said, never stop preaching. That means what? It don't matter what they say. Right. It don't matter what they do. What if Timmy was told? Uh, what? Be ready in season yeah. and out of season. Instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Paul had to teach him that. Right? To have endurance because you don't care what type of leadership you're in. You're going to be attacked by somebody. Yeah. Just But you still stay your eyes on the goal, right? right? To please God no matter what folks say. Okay, because they will come, and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. All right, any other questions or comments as we keep going? I want to make sure we get through this here. No, uh, go ahead. This is, I think, it's important. You know that Miriam died in this too. Yes, she did. You know because um, you know sometimes when you 
when you are already in a bad predicament, and then somebody that you look to, you know, one of the leaders is gone. You know, you know, and, and in this case, you know, you think about Moses and Aaron, you know, you know, boom, now she's gone and now they have a deal. We pray the folk for the two of them. You know, um, talking about all this stuff about, you know, we're gonna die here too. We just bring the law right here today. You know, I just you know, it kind of whenever you have a big death like that, oftentimes it put a that's it puts a damper on you know, your your nation that you're dealing with. If I think about, you know, um the JFK um, yeah. situation was on T V last night, you know, you think about Martin Luther King died and you know, all that stuff, how they how they kind of robbed the country, you know, um, and I know for a lot of black people, you know, when when that uh, Martin Luther King died, that was like, dang, you know, man, the one person that we, you know, thought should, they got him too, and so you know, it's just a, yeah. it's just yeah. a, that that help, it doesn't help with your emotional either, you know, when you have to deal with the death of someone like that. But you know, here's the difference between Jesus and all of them. Jesus said, did something more powerful the king ever could do, uh, more powerful than any leader, more than Mandela, Steve Biko, whoever you want to put out there. Number one, he continues to live on in the people. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That's the superiority. See, I'm bringing this out for a reason. This is piggybacking on what you said. You can stop a leader but you cannot stop a movement that's in the heart of the people. Huh? So that's why he is a superior leader than anything mankind could have ever or ever will produce. Because if you think about it, when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, that was an assassination by his enemies. Huh? But they could not win because why? He got up from the grave. Right, and so that's why I said that's you. You'll never, you'll never stop the church ever. You never will because why? We don't need a building. We don't need geographic borders. We don't need tanks. We don't need missiles. We don't need nuclear weapons. Why? Because the light is already in us. It's called Jesus, and you can kill as many as you want to of us, but we still will march forward. Right? Remember, Daniel said. That a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Right. What was he really talking about? The church. Yeah. The church, right? And so that's a good observation. I just want to bring that out of how powerful God, uh, how powerful, number one, our leader is Jesus, and how powerful the movement, if I can use it that way, being Christianity, will never be crushed by no man. Nobody. Okay. All right, let's keep going real, real quickly now. All right, somebody read me 6 to 8. Numbers 26 to 8. Anybody. And Moses sent Aaron men from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and get thou and the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. and speak ye unto the rod before their eyes. Mm -hmm. And okay. it shall, shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. That's good. That's good. Hold on one second. Let's go. Just let's go six to eight just for a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. that's good. All right. So how did again? And you see the same pattern every time the people act up. And do crazy things. Mm -hmm. What did Moses and Aaron do? Go straight to God. Yeah. Same thing should, we should do, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that bothers you, what are we supposed to do? Bring it to God. That way we don't worry about it. Sister Heath uh, made a, a, a profound statement uh, a couple classes ago. Remember I said, I don't know how in the world I could have been old Moses. I couldn't do it. Remember I said that? She said, yes, you can. God. And the reason being is what? Their strength came from the Lord. Him. Because <laughs> if you think about all the murmurs, again, we don't know how many of us, could have been millions of them out there. 
at that time, you can't take all that criticism and complaining by yourself. God's got to be really holding you up, otherwise that stuff will crush you. I don't care what we say. Like we say all the time, sticks and stones may break my bones, and so will criticism if we let it. Yeah. <laughs> we say it don't, but it will if we give it that dominion by not what going to God about it. Okay? And so you see them doing it, right? So again, what are they doing? They're seeking wisdom from the Lord, like we're supposed to do, right? When we are confused, we need knowledge, we need strength, we need encouragement. And or leadership, we seek it at the hand of the Lord. Right? Before you pick up your telephone, get on your knees. Don't ask nobody about, what should I do? This, that, that. You better start asking God first. Right? Because I don't care how good a person that you are talking to, that still could be the devil on the other side of that line. <clears throat> hmm? You might know him 20, 30 years. Think about it. Think about all your girlfriends that ain't got no husband and trying to give you husband advice. <laughs> huh? Pick it up. Why are y'all calling them type of folk? Call somebody successful. Uh, huh? Girl, I wouldn't take all that. Girl, you better take that to God. He <laughs> quit talking to you for. Huh? Because why? Who folks don't mean no good? Right? Everybody on the end of that telephone ain't good for you. And sometimes you better be like Ecclesiastes folk. Ecclesiastes said, well, there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. Mm -hmm. Don't put all your business out in the street. Huh? Because they will contribute to your house being broken up. I'm telling you, you don't know it by now, right? So let's go back at Moses and Aaron. God revealed the answer to the problem. Why? Because his ears are always open to the righteous, right? right. Just like us. Because that actually comes from 1 Peter 3, verse 12, part of our covenant, right? Mm -hmm. The eyes of the Lord are, are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that what? Do, do evil. All right. So what did God tell them to do? Because this, this is greatly important, right? right? What did God tell them to do? Take, take the robbers, the they staff, right. right? And gather the, the assembly together, and Aaron and that brother, and what? Go speak to the rock. Speak Hit the rock. Speak. Caress the rock. Speak. Polish the rock. He said, speak to it. And remember, God is what? In the details. The details make a difference as to whether God will be pleased with you or not. That seems like a small detail. But it is it, right? And so... Again, as Brother Mitchell has said to you before, this is not the first time he said, go to the rock. Right. It's not the first time that they need to get water in the desert. So what did they have to do the first time? What did Moses have to do the first time? Strike, Strike the rock. <laughs> Meaning what? Hit the rock. Uh -huh. What did he tell them to do this time? Speak. Speak it and tell you to hit the rock this time. That's a different detail. Right? When you look at what the Bible says in, in, about singing in the New Testament, it says what? Sing. It didn't say what? It didn't say play anything. Right? So you got to think about the what? The details. Mm -hmm. Back in the Old Testament, yeah, they strung instruments and all that kind of stuff. But that was what? Then. Now God says what? Sing. Mm -hmm. Just leave it as it is. Just because you could do something before, don't we even do it now. Huh? Same here, right? Mm -hmm. Moses and Aaron could strike the rock mm -hmm. in the past, but what? God gave them a different commandment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that commandment does what? It supersedes the old commandment. Yeah. Now in the oh. New Testament, there's a scripture that said the rock that followed them was Christ. Mm -hmm. Now this is the rock here. I know you're going to get to it. Yeah, you beat me there. Well, <laughs> No, 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 no. I was trying to find out where it was in my mind, but I don't have my glasses to go ahead. See, he, he gave y'all a lifeline because I'm going to ask you, why is it significant the rock is mentioned? Right. I preached a sermon from that rock in jail about that wall. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the you rock connect, is Christ. You can connect those two. You can connect the wall and the rock to Christ, mm -hmm. and you can preach the gospel from that. Absolutely. That's scripted right there. Absolutely. It's just taking the time because you have to go from the old to the new. Yeah. But you can do it. You got to set it up right. So uh, because, uh, uh, it's in Korean, I think. Uh, I think it's around 10, isn't it? 10. I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think it is. Yeah, Paul, he mentioned it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, again, because again, why? 
the Old Testament is also symbolic right. of the New Testament. So that's a good that's a good idea. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. Well, that is the that is the church right there. Yeah, that, I was we right. can connect the baptism and everything. I seen the old preacher do it. Preach that one right there, that number twenty six through eight, mm -hmm. and he brought in the church, the uh, the baptism and all from that from right there because he preached Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And brought it on into the church. It was a long sermon, but boy, it was a good. One. You have to do it that way. Yeah, it was a long, but it was good. <laughs> Somebody get me that. Yeah. Uh, Romans 10, verse 4. I mean, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 10, mm -hmm. verse 4. I want to think of Romans. That's way off the track. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Now we're going to show you again that this is symbolic of Jesus. Because again, what was the red heifer also that we touched last week was what? Symbolic of Jesus. So again, we keep seeing Jesus throughout the Old Testament. All right. So somebody read that. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. And in all drink. The same spirit to drink. That's it. For they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. I'm going to pick with you. Now, <laughs> since y'all so smart <laughs> and getting ahead of the teacher, I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you. If you're getting ahead of the teacher, now I will challenge you then. So if the rock is Christ, what's the first event when water wasn't there? What's the first event? Think about the commandment. Uh -huh. The first time when they had to go to the rock, what did they have to do? To strike it. If that's Christ, what is that? Oh, the, crucifixion. the crucifixion. That is absolutely correct. So now... This, time. this is symbolism of being beyond the crucifixion. The crucifixion. The crucifixion. You have gone forward from the crucifixion to now. So what is he really saying now in this one is to speak to the rock? It's a baptism. Not necessarily a baptism. Yeah. They got they, yeah, they're going to, though. Mm -hmm. Speaking is what? Teaching and prayer. And it's prayer. prayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, prayer. Okay. <laughs> Correct. So in other words, what? <laughs> Now that you are in the body, all you got to do is speak to God to get what you, what you want. need. Oh. Because they're in the church, yeah. Correct. They were baptizing unto Moses. In the church. Which is baptized unto Jesus. I see what you're doing. Now you put the wilderness of the church there and then you bring it over to, to us. Yes. It's the same. It's the same thing. No, I see what you're doing. And so why would God be angry if on this second time going to the rock, uh, Moses would hit it. Why would he be mad at that? Because he's talking symbols now. Why would God be mad if God, if this rock is struck this time? Because he failed to, to do what God had told him to do. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It symbolizes prayer, right? Yes, but, but, but who is the rock? Okay, so the first time the rock was what? Struck, which is what? The second time is the rock, the rock supposed to be struck. Okay, because why? What does that really say? Today, why is that? What is that saying today? Correct. Correct. Right. Christ was only crucified one time. And so don't go try to strike him again. That's disrespect. You get it? That's disrespect to Christ by hitting the rock. I see where you're going now. Ah. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Now, yeah. so technically then, yeah. if we had to crucify Jesus again, that's saying his crucifixion was not effective the first time. <laughs> Now you're going back to the Old Testament way that they used to do it. Remember? Mm -hmm. they, we talked about this. And I'm taking you deep. Mm -hmm. They gave animal sacrifices every day. Right. They gave on special occasions. Mm -hmm. They gave on a day of atonement once a year. Mm -hmm. So really, if you're striking a rock twice, you're saying that Jesus can't save you. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's the big deal here. 
Okay, does that make sense to you? We only need Jesus crucified but one time. His blood is that effective. To take our past, what, our, our sins, sins from the past, the present, and the future. Yeah. All right. It won't take but one time. That's it. Okay? All right, any questions or comments on that? I want to get there because this is huge. This is huge. Okay? This is the foundation of your faith as a Christian. This is done symbolism here. Okay? So again, we all we got to do is just ask. Now, all we got to do is just speak. That's all we got to do. To ask for what we need. Receive not because you what? Ask not. Okay? All right, let me keep going real quickly just because my time really is about up. But I got, but I got to get you there. I got to get you somewhere. All right, let me read number 9 and 11 just for Ibsen's sake. I mean, for time's sake. Y'all good with that? Number 20, verse 9 and verse 11. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now ye rebels. Now, the two mistakes. The first mistake is by the people. Because why did, who did they blame their problems on? Moses. Moses. Now, who was Moses looking at instead of God? The people. So when you look at the people, you lose your focus. So now he's become carnal-minded instead of spiritually minded. Ah, now everybody's looking at each other instead of God. Nobody's looking at God right now at the rock. So when that becomes the case, something is definitely going to go wrong. So when this is the case, then Satan has taken control of the mind of the people and Moses. Mm -hmm. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Moses, his emotions messed it up. Yeah, he, he was mad. You can go to the first level. You can see he was mad. He hit it two times. <laughs> 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 it wasn't him to run. He was thinking about the people. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a door in the back for me. <laughs> Not so much here, but I'm telling you, every place I preach, yeah, yes, yes. I understand it. I get it. I get it 100%. All right. Let me, let me, go, let me keep dealing with this. I can get with the whole scripture. Yeah, okay. And most of the rock from before the Lord as he commanded him. And most of the air gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. I'm glad you said it real soft. <laughs> Must we? That's what he said. He should have said you. Well, actually, he should have said, "Must God?" Oh, okay. That's what he should have said, mm -hmm. right? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Look, Aaron oh, and Moses. Okay. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. right. well, this is this is huge. That's right. The power's not in you, no. Moses yeah. or Aaron. The power's not in me. The power's not in the elders. The power's not in the deacons. The power is in God. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, you have to lead by example, too. Mm -hmm. Right? What Timothy was told, what? To be an example unto the people. Same mm -hmm. thing here. And he's going to fail miserably mm -hmm. as being an example unto the people because he should have been the one. I don't care. Like Joshua could leave. I don't care what you do. I'm going to follow God. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? So he's off now. Mm -hmm. He's off. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. Right. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. Now, you still see the kindness of God in this. Because yeah, right. without this, you still see the love of God in this. Because God didn't have to give them anything. Right. Because of what? They're complaining. Mm -hmm. Moses' bad leadership. Moses' disobedience. He still took care of Okay, that's the grace of God. And you see little pieces of it. Now, we know grace and truth came through Jesus, but sparks of grace and truth came in the Old Testament too. Because I'm going to show you something that will blow your mind. Remember, look what David did with Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be killed over that. Just from what? Well, actually should have been killed twice. Because why? He committed adultery and he committed murder. Yeah. I mean, he orchestrated the murder. He may not have actually killed Uriah, but he was the one responsible for it, and God held him responsible for it. So with that, you're supposed to be killed immediately, but he got a measure of grace, right? Because he should have died. What did yeah. God tell him? God said, if you want, I would have gave to you. I'd have gave you several wives, more wives. Yeah, you didn't have to do all that. You had to do all that. 
All right. So quickly here now, y'all see my time is up. But I got I got to get you to a point real quick. So obviously then we saw that Moses obeyed, but not fully. He went to the rock, but he didn't do what he was supposed to do, right? Right. All right. He struck it instead of what? Spoke to it. He was supposed to go to the rock and speak to it later, right? right. So by striking the rock, the potential for the credit of a miracle would have been given to Moses instead of God. Because again, what did he say? Must we fetch you water from the rock? He should have said, God is going to provide this for you. And that's what God is going to be angry with, okay? Specifically to them, right? The one who was supposed to receive the glory, the honor, and the praise was God. Right. At the end of the day, that's what he was trying to get out of Moses. Show them that I am God. Remember, that was the purpose of what he did in Egypt. He was to show Egypt who was God. And he sure did a good job of that. And he's trying to do the same thing with Moses. I want you to show them by speaking to the rock, because when he speaks to the rock, that nobody could deny a miracle had happened. Yeah, right. Nobody could deny that that was of God and not of Moses and Aaron. Okay? And he, by what he did, denied God that glory. Okay? That's why God was so angry. So God, so again, Moses speaking to the rock will show that it was God who did the miracle without a doubt. So this brings two thoughts to the mind that Christians can use. First, we must do all things in our lives so that God gets the glory and not us. Mm -hmm. Remember, our light is supposed to shine that what? People will see our good works and what? Glorify not glorify us. But glorify our Father in heaven. Again, what? Matthew 5, verse 16. So you see a Christian principle. Again, we are only vessels for God to use so he can get the praise. Not us. Not us. You always want to deflect the praise. When somebody's already, you know, giving you all the glory and the credit and all that kind of stuff, take it away. Take it away and say, look, no, that wasn't me. That was just God blessing you. I just have to be a vessel he's using. That's it. But really, give God what? The praise. Don't give it to me. Give it to God, right? So again, always redirect the praise and thanks to God for things done. And secondly, what do we learn? We must fully obey God or our obedience is in vain. So again, this applies regarding how Christians worship today. Again, that's why again, John 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship them must worship in what? Spirit and in truth. Truth means what? Fully. Fully according to what God has told us to do and away from anything we want to take from it or add to it. That's what truth really means, okay? All right. So obviously then, Moses obeyed, but not in the truth, right? He did something right. He went to the rock, but then he what? He made it untruthful by not doing what God said, right? specifically, right? So again, some professed Christians today, though they claim to be Christians, but really are not. They're eliminating things from uh, God's appointed way of worshiping and adding things to it, right? Mm -hmm. So when we do not give God what he wants from us in its entirety, we have sinned and made our worship in vain. Matthew 15, verse 5. Right. See, that's another thing. That's one reason, like, for instance, if we visit the sick and they want us to bring worship to, uh, worships to them, most people make a mistake. Bring me the Lord's Supper. That ain't all you got to do. You got to do all five parts. Of the worship service, even if it's short. So obviously, we still sing there, you know, to make sure that they're singing along with us, right? Mm -hmm. We're still praying. We still, you know, I'll give them a chance to give an offering, right? right. Uh, give them a short word from God, then the Lord's Supper, right? Because why? You can't take one out mm -hmm. and say you have worship. Then you have not worship in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. That's why the elders, and especially Brother Byers, get on folk all the time. Stop being late to worship service. Because that you can easily miss a portion of the worship service, and then what have you done? You have worship in vain. Again, we're going to start. Lord sees fit. We're going to bring our evening worship service back next quarter. And so, if you mess that up, you got an opportunity to come on back and do that thing the right way. Right? Think about it, people. We got we got to make sure that we're setting aside the Lord's day and doing what we're supposed to do, specifically, and in completion. On the Lord's day. That makes sense to you? All right. So again, here's what God said. You look at verse 20, 12, and 13. I know I'm over, but this is, I got to put this in for you. And here's the consequence. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you what? So what do you see Moses and Aaron said? 
What's the root cause of it? People, people miss this all the time. What was wrong with Moses and Aaron? They didn't believe. That's you gotta go by what's said. Everything else was speculation. But the root cause of their disobedience was what? A lack of faith on the part of the leaders. We talk about the congregation that were following them not being faithful, but Moses and Aaron had a problem at the rock. Oh. So now, every time they had a problem with faith, that it turned into what? A lack of obedience shortly thereafter. So I would see there, think about it. If you're a human being, if this was us, we saw that striking a rock worked. That's what we want to do again. Strike it again. But God, what? Calls them to go to a next level and says, no, 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 I don't want you just to talk to it. So what was going on in Moses and Aaron here? That ain't going to work. Oh. Because why? God said what? They believe me not. That was their problem. Okay? So they had issues with faith from the top to the bottom of that group of people. All right? People missed that. That was the real reason Moses messed up at the rock. Okay? All right. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not, to what? Sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. What does that word sanctify mean? It means the same thing now. Worship. Not necessarily worship. Yeah. Yeah. Set them apart. What's another word for set apart that you might use today? Holy. Moses and Aaron, your job at the rock was to make me holy in front of everybody else. Holy means what? Above everything and everybody else. That's what it means to what? Be set apart. Now that, what well, God is saying, now that you can give me that, the people don't understand how to put me on the pedestal I belong on. Huh? Because you disobeyed. So in other words, what have you done? You have messed with the honor of God. Somebody prayed a little bit earlier, maybe it was Brother Mitchell, that whatever we do, we don't want to bring shame on the name of God. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Yeah. When you don't raise him above you and everybody else, you're bringing what? Shame. It's only two alternatives. Either you, you're lifting God up or you what? Tearing him down. Yeah. Tearing him down. This is what happened. To sanctify me into what? He had, God had a goal with this. In the eyes of the children of yeah. Israel. I want you to show that I'm holy so that they can do it. But y'all, uh, your lack of faith would allow you to fulfill that mission. All right? Now, look what he said. Therefore means what? Because you did this, this is what's going to happen. All right? Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given mm -hmm. them. So that's the consequence of their disobedience, right? Mm -hmm. So now Moses and, and Moses and Aaron, after all they did, mm -hmm. after all that struggle in the wilderness, they can't go in it. God allowed him to see it, but not step one foot into the land of Canaan, right? Now, verse 13 says, This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and was not, and he was sanctified in them. All right, strove means what? They really were fighting God, right? So you see uh, two groups of people that God is angry with. What? The children of Israel and what? Moses and Aaron. Okay? Alright, so the whole point was what? God was just trying to use them as example of faith among the people, but they failed, right? The punishment was physical death of these two leaders before the children of Israel entered the promised land of Canaan. God did not completely cast Moses away because we do see him spiritually reappear many centuries later. So obviously Moses got some grace. Mm -hmm. Spiritually. But his body still had to be what? Taken. He had to die. But he still re re got grace. The reason why we know, because what? What is Matthew 17, verse 1 and the first, verse 9? The Mount of Transfiguration. The Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah. In which what? Jesus was standing there. Moses and uh, Elijah. Okay? All right. So, again, this indicates God's forgiveness of him. But he still had to what? Suffer the consequences during his earthly life. 
So again, I know nobody in the church want to hear that, but God can forgive you and still punish you at the same time. Not just you, me. All of us, right? You still may make it to heaven, but still you may have to go under the chastening of the Lord for a moment. Until what? You get back right with him. That makes sense to you? It, it happens, all right? All right, let's see. Make sure I covered it off. So I, think this is, I think we're about done. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Hebrews 12, verse 5, verse number 11, talks about the chastening of the Lord. That means sometimes God puts you through some suffering because he's trying to get you back right. Have you ever, have you, anybody ever experienced that? You don't have to admit it. Oh, yeah. But have you gone through some things? Yeah. And when you stop doing it, your life changed? I know it was for me. I know it. You know, when I was in the club and all that kind of nonsense, all kind of mess was happening. But when I stopped doing that stuff, stuff got better. A whole, A whole lot, lot better in life. Because why? God was punishing me for a whole lot of stuff. That I was doing until what? I changed my ways. And that's why. That's what him acting as a father to you. Because he could do us like Solomon and Gomorrah and just get rid of us if he really wants to. But instead, he it, can I use the word? Sometimes he just got to spank you <laughs> instead of kill you to get you back to where you need to be. Huh? Well, again, look at, the, look at the communion. When you look at uh, 1 Corinthians. You know, remember it said uh, after the communion, was it 11, 23 on? He said, remember at the end of that, when they were taking an unworthy marriage, he said there was two punishments that was put on the congregation there. He said, what? Some are weak and sickly among you. And some of them, what? Sleep. Some of them he healed. But others he, what? Punished. In order to, that's what the weak and sickly thing is. In order to, what? Get them to do things the right way. Nobody wants to hear that, right? You'll never see that on TV. But it is the church. Yes, sir. The seven churches in Revelation. Mm -hmm. Revelation 1 and 3. Right. And remember, he was, what's the best word of saying? I don't want to say the word threatening. But he was really putting it down. If you don't change. I'm going to change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something's going to happen. Yes, sir. That's going to happen. And the thing is, when you look at the seven churches. had love, but they didn't have the love in the right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or some of them were lukewarm. Lukewarm. Yeah. They just going to worship and yeah, uh, going yeah. home. They were just enough to get yeah. by. That's what going I mean. through the routines. Yeah. Okay. That kind of thing. So, and if you ever look at Revelation chapter one verse three, it talks about several different types of congregations. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you, practically every church, I'm talking about every congregation, fits one of those models in Revelation chapter one to three. And so if he's calling them to repent and change as a group, then what? They got to change. Because remember, he was talking to the folks as a group. And so obviously then, uh, that's what the leadership in each congregation got to see and try to tackle those issues. You know, if you look at some congregations, they will just let any type of false doctrine in. And that's part of one of the seven churches of Asia. And what you got to do, you got to get that stuff out of there. That's just one example. You know, you can't just turn your head and when things go wrong, you got to get the church back on track as best as possible. All right? So, again, um, I think that's enough, right? Because we did finish where I wanted to get to, so we finished the waters of Meribah, right? Mm -hmm. And so next week we'll start with verse number 14 because it's a different thought of God. Very good. All right, any last questions or comments there? Feel free. All right. Since we are over time, uh, we're going to go ahead and just proceed. Uh, Brother Dez, would you mind giving us a closing prayer at this time? So we'll go ahead and we'll do what we typically do. We'll take any uh, last announcements or any prayer requests you have been prayed for at this time. Uh, do we have any uh, at this time? Yes, sir. I have one, and it's another co-worker. Her name is um, Stephanie Miller. She was just having a real rough time with issues in her family. Her husband was sick, and, and then she was having all kinds. But mainly her husband has been really sick. He had an artery to rupture in his nose. Oh my. And uh, he's been honored and stubborn, but she had to do everything. And she has no family but two sons, and one of them is a drug addict, so he's no help. But anyway, just pray for her, because she's a really going through. Absolutely. And her name is Stephanie Miller. Absolutely. Any others? Oh, go ahead, Sister.
Absolutely. Yeah. Any others? Go ahead, Brian. Uh, yes. Especially for oh. Alaska, uh, and going through Trump, and that's why I'm trying to say um, right decisions, young things, and things uh, get right from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, Brother Desmond? Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm pretty much in the same state as Trump. Mm -hmm. um, got to keep moving in prayer, too. Just that, um, you know, dealing with this lesson of man is, is right now my habit. Mm -hmm. And just need to make sure I stay focused on some things. Absolutely. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any others? If not, then I'll go with my, head, my announcement again. I know I'm repetitive about it, but um, as time goes on, we get closer and closer to the uh, date in which we're uh, trying to establish a congregation in Abatete, a number state, Nigeria. So continue to pray for the resources there, the health of the brethren, they have all that they need uh, in order to establish a congregation uh, there in that town uh, in southeast uh, Nigeria. Uh, again, one more call. Any other questions there? Uh, excuse me, any other prayer requests or announcements before we move forward? If not, again, and I'm going to be sure just for uh, time's sake, uh, if you're a Christian that's fallen, uh, sure, you walk this word. We know that the grace of God is there uh, for you, but we still have our responsibilities. Out of Acts 8, 22 and 1 John 1, 7, verse number 10, that is to repent, confess the cross to God, and ask to forgive us, and he will do, definitely do that. Uh, but if we're not a child of God, we've got time for you here tonight now, because that's the most important decision that you have to make, and we're in support of you. What am I saying is that you've got to give your life to Jesus Christ. The rock that we talked about earlier here, so that you can have eternal life. Uh, of course, the Bible says in John 3, verse number 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Church, help me out. Everlasting life. And we know that everlasting life is not talking about the body. It's talking about what? The soul. It's talking about what? After we die, that we can go to heaven. And make that our eternal home when all is said and done. It's an easy way of saying that. But uh, as an alternative, right? Remember Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15. There's only two places you're going to go. Either going to be your name is going to be in the book of life leading to heaven, right? Or you're going to go to the lake of fire, which we don't want to put on anybody, even our worst enemy. Because everything we're talking about after, at the judgment day is what? Eternal. It cannot be changed. And so we obviously want to make sure we die as a Christian a firm believer in the Jesus Christ as the Son of <coughs> Almighty God in order to be saved. That's actually the first part of the plan of salvation is that you got to hear the word of God. You just heard it. You just heard that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, your Lord and your Savior. you got to believe that in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. But you also, if you've been a part of this class, whether here uh, personally or on the broadcast, you see the importance of obedience to the word of God. That's the third part of the plan of salvation. That's why God, Jesus says that you have to repent or you will likewise perish. Luke 13, verse 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Repent means what? To turn to God in behavior, righteousness, and leave a sinful lifestyle alone. The fourth part of the plan of salvation is what? What we got to speak. That is, we got to confess Jesus as the Son of God, meaning our Lord, to be saved. He said in Romans 10, verse 9, and verse number 10, Acts 8, 37. And we must go down in the water grave of baptism. In order to be saved. It's called a, a grave because why? That's where the old man dies, but you're raised a new creation. God says all things become new at that point. So you get a brand new life in Christ. God forgives you for everything and all things that you have ever done and puts you on a road to salvation if you stay faithful unto death. Again, you'll see all that. Don't take my word for it. Study in the Bible. The Bible says in Acts 22 verse 16, when you come out of the water grave of baptism, it says, why tarry us thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. It means to look unto Jesus as your salvation after you come out of that water grave of baptism. In other words, when you go in that water grave of baptism, that's when you are looking for. I mean, you're calling on the name of Jesus. Let me say it right in the correct way. So this is your opportunity. We'll just take your confession. I'm just going to ask you very simply, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you confirm your faith, we'll go down in that water right now. And you'll rise in new creation. All your sins be washed away. You'll be saved if you stay faithful. Me saying, Lord of Jesus, unto death. Mm -hmm. Complete believing and obeying to the end. And heaven is going to be your home. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Do we have any or either of those categories tonight that you want to give your life to Christ by giving confession and being baptized? Or you must be restored as a Christian that has fallen short? Do we have any at this time? 
If not, we'll go ahead and let you go. Let's go ahead and stand and let a brother give us a verse of a song, and then Brother Desmond will give us uh, the closing prayer. I have decided to follow.